Hello, brothers and sisters, and you are welcome. Our theme for the year 2022 is Abundant Life in Christ Jesus. I want to spend this first quarter digging deeper into that subject. So we may um, come to the full measure of the statue of Christ. For those who may be joining us new, whether of uh, Facebook, uh, Surefire Live Conference is a gathering with the aim, the objective of making simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. And by so doing, we, all of us, uh, will manifest Christ and his abundant and eternal life in all aspects of life. And so the theme and topic, therefore, abundant life is a direct offshoot from that. I want to encourage those also who have not spent time to read the book, Who is a Christian? Please read that book and repeat it. I've told you without, uh, with all humility, I was given that book by the Holy Spirit to write and the Holy Spirit himself kept teaching me and brought me to that point where, where I was able to put that book together. And the objective was to make the pathway to eternal life may say simply enough that anybody who reads will be able to understand for himself or herself and therefore gain eternal life. I want to challenge us again that the greatest need of mankind is eternal life, nothing more. A man may have whatever he may have. A woman may have whatever she may have. But at the end of it all, what matters is where do you spend eternity? And as people get to the, the end of their life, if at all they care, this question becomes very uh, important in the hearts of people. Unfortunately for some, it's usually too late. So the objective of this teaching is for us to explore why we are here, that we may get the full benefit of the provisions of God for our lives. And beyond here, spend that eternity with him, our creator, as he has desired and ordained it to be. So once again, I probably would just fly that book. There's an electronic copy, and you can read the coordinator to send it to you. So let me start by looking at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, just in the context of that book. It says, for it is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And I add, and gain eternal life. It is not the will of God that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and gain eternal life. Gain eternal life, the emphasis is mine. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So let's get on our journey on the theme for the year and topic for today, abundant life. Abundant life. We're going to apply our method. We're going to do a study. It is a study. So be ready to discuss. Be ready to discover. Be ready to bring those questions that will enable us study deeply to understand and gain this abundant life that God has given to us. So we're going to apply our method of studying. That is the what the why and the how. The what, the why, and the how. Uh, and of course, we'll go through this. We would not necessarily be telling you this is what, this is why, this is how, but that will be the context. And you can always apply this 
to study anything, to frame any subject so you can have a deeper understanding. Our text is John chapter 10, verse 10b, and 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. I would like a fast reader to read 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, while I will read John chapter 10, verse 10b. John chapter 10, verse 10b. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10b. I'll repeat it. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ made this statement. What a bold statement to make. Jesus said he has come that you and I, all humankind, may have life and have it more abundantly. Glory be to God. This is what we want to explore then. What is this abundant life that Jesus Christ has come and has given to us? Why is it so important? And how do we receive and enjoy this abundant life? You see how the what, the why, and the how plays out. Okay, um, the second reading, please, who wants to go? Open the, your line and read it for us. Praise and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to the life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. Amen. So to start with, here it is clear that it is the knowledge, look at verse 2, it is the knowledge of God and of Jesus. And, say, and our Savior, G Jesus Christ, the knowledge of Jesus Christ that we enjoy, receive the power of this divine uh, nature. It is all about Jesus Christ. So, and that's why we want to look at Jesus Christ. We want to understand or look deeper. Who is Christ? And that's also the question that um, we try to address in that book, Who is a Christian? Who is Christ? Because the entire abundant life is hinged on Christ. In that John chapter 10, verse 10 B, Jesus is the one who said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And so here again in first Peter, sorry, second Peter chapter one, verses two through four, the scripture makes it clear that it is through Jesus Christ that we receive this abundant life and uh, receive the divine nature and by the divine power thereof that comes through this divine nature, we have all things pertaining to life and godliness. All things, that's verse three, all things pertaining to life and godliness. Verse three, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So the knowledge of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that verse 2 already talked about. We receive the divine power, and verse 4 goes on to say that uh, we have been given, or uh, we have been made to be the partakers of the divine nature. 
and we have escaped the corruption of the world. So, three key points to anchor what we are looking at here. That Jesus Christ is the author of this abundant life. It is through him that we receive the abundant life. The abundant life is the life of God that God gives to us. Amen. And we'll come to that detail so we can all explain. You know, because some people want to be able to prescribe this abundant life and pinpoint it. Say, this is what it is. This is what that God will help us. I hope you are ready to contribute. Amen. But suffice to understand the context. We have to set the context that it's all about Jesus, and he is the one through whom God gives us this abundant life. And Jesus boldly therefore declared that, I have come, that they may have life and have it abundantly. Okay, so I was making summary of three points that through Jesus Christ, we receive this abundant life because we have come to Jesus. God gives us the divine nature. God gives us the divine nature. And by that divine nature, we have escaped the corruption of the world. At least note those three points. This gives us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So we are in God. We have escaped the corruption of the world. And through Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Okay. So we want to study about Jesus in order to understand the abundant life that Jesus gives. Why is this very important and how this, this approach? If somebody tells you, I want to give you a million naira. If you didn't know, I mean, uh, let's say you know that person and the person was just an ordinary gardener in your house that comes to you and say, I will give you a million naira. I'm sure a million dollars. I'm sure you will just disregard it, isn't it? But if a well-known billionaire says, oh, you got a call. You have been picked as the, uh, so, uh, the, the person that has won maybe uh, his scholarship or whatever um, favors he has decided to extend to people. And therefore, he has promised to give you a million dollars. You know his name, uh, maybe the richest man in Africa, the richest man in America all that, you will have absolutely no doubt, isn't it? Praise the name of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, many are not enjoying the fullness of the life God has provided for us because we do not know the author of this life well enough. So this is what we want to study. And the synoptic gospels were written to give us an understanding of who Jesus is. So that's why we want to approach this study by looking at the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to look at chapter by chapter. We will summarize that and then discuss. While we are doing this, you are gonna pay attention to two key questions. You're going to pay attention to what Jesus says about himself, who he is, and transform that into your own understanding of who Jesus is to you. So you're going to be writing out who Jesus is to you. The outcome of this study will be one for you to note who Jesus says he is, in the context of the Synoptic Gospels, you can corroborate it with other scriptures and translate that into your understanding of who Jesus is to you, who is Jesus to you. Because he's the one who has promised abundant life. Unless you know who he is, 
it will be difficult for you to fully exercise what is required for you to enjoy this abundant life. Exercise the faith to be clear that is required for you to enjoy the abundant life. Number two, you're going to pay attention to what Jesus says we should do in order to enjoy this abundant life. So those are the two key questions you're going to pay attention to. Point number three then, which is just for you, is your understanding of what abundant life means. But that's what we're going to also be talking about. I will start to do. Now, the Synoptic Gospels has uh, four books, or I mean, have four books rather. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew has 28 chapters. Mark has 16 chapters. Luke has 24 chapters, and John has 21 chapters. If you sum this up, they come to 89 chapters, 89 chapters. And if you count the days in the first quarter, January to March, you come to 90 days. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's why we're going to study a chapter a day. Today we are at chapter 16 of Matthew, chapter 16 of Matthew. Um, so I'm going to try to start Matthew. Uh, and give us some key points, especially from Matthew chapter one and the context of Matthew. And you will do the reading. Um, now, this is what we're going to be doing. Every week, we will study seven chapters, right? We will study seven chapters. And then during the week, we will discuss those seven chapters. And on the Sunday that follows, we will bring those seven chapters then. The topics that have come out, we will bring them and we will address them and then um, discuss the key messages of those seven chapters. From where we are now, focus on chapter 16. So if we start now, Seven chapters will be chapter 16 to chapter 22, okay? That's what we're going to study this week. And every one of us should focus on those chapters and be part of the discussion. So I thank everyone who contributed to the discussions of uh, chapter 13 to chapter 15. They were very healthy discussions and the questions uh, that have ensued from there, which we have addressed on our platform. So if you're joining us on Facebook, uh, please drop your contact so we can add you to our Facebook. You can send uh, your contact to uh, the messenger to keep it private. Then we can add you to the WhatsApp group so we can you can interact there with us where we act actively do the study. Praise the name of the Lord. So, abundant life in Christ Jesus. The sentence itself is simple. So it's clear that this abundant life is through Jesus Christ, just as we have established in the scripture. Now let us look at those two key words, abundant and life. Abundant life. Abundant, we know what that means. It means to exist or existing in large quantities. That is to be plentiful. In the context that Jesus spoke there, it means more than enough. Life that is more than enough. Life that is unlimited. So, Abundant life, life that is more than enough, life that is unlimited. It means abundant supply of all the requirements of life. Glory be to God. It means abundant provisions or more than enough provisions. If you just reflect on those. Immediately, as we were studying the uh, Matthew, I believe Matthew chapter 14, verse 20, 
and 37 will come to mind. Let's look at it. I think a number of people raise this. Matthew chapter 20, um, uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 20. Matthew 14, 20, just for an illustration. Let's start from 19. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitude. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. So uh, now let's add 21. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Now, now, let's just get the context here. <laughs> because this blows my mind every time I look at it, brothers and sisters. Here were 5,000 men. This were about 5,000 men. And you can add women. If you like, just say 5,000 women, right? Women usually attend more programs than men, actually. I mean, women love God. Hallelujah. Uh, you may not like it, but that's the reality. Oh, yes, women love God. And uh, I pray men who also love God like women do. If you are doubting me, go back and read. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was women who went first, right? Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Glory be to God. Now, at the children. So the women who were there, if there were 5,000 women as well, just to make it equal with men. And each, how many children were there? Some women will bring three, four, five of their children. And some may not have any. But So you can as well round off to another 5,000 children just for argument's sake. I'm not saying that's what uh, really is. Just to have a mental picture of what we're talking about. So let's say in the least 15,000 people. Or even if you want to keep it at 10, between 10 and 15,000, it could have been more, much more. Two fishes or two fish, they were the same kind as the scripture puts it here, and five loaves of bread. Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and gave them to eat. So here Jesus demonstrated again what he was talking about. He said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Remember, the disciples are said, dismiss them. So they go and eat. So they could have gone to their houses and eat. But Jesus demonstrated that he is more than enough. He is all sufficient to meet every need for those who follow him. Abundant life. Life that is unlimited. So this life is not just bread and uh, drinking and eating. Like the song that we sang to start this meeting. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. You know, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking. That's that scripture, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So, abundant life. This life is not just eating and drinking. It is the entire and the entirety of all that we need in this life and beyond this life. I think by this, I've already said what the abundant life is. Praise the name of the Lord. So like that first Peter chapter two, uh, sorry, second Peter chapter one, verses two through four says in verse three, he said, all things pertaining to life and godliness. That's what is abundant life. In the same Matthew chapter 15, verse 37, Jesus repeated that again for emphasis to show that it was not just like some people will say a fluke, 
Some people will say that God's miracle is coincidence. Jesus demonstrated that it is not a coincidence. I, Jesus, can do whatever it takes and whatever is required in life for those who follow me. Abundant life. And more importantly, this abundant life leads us to eternal life. Glory be to God. So it is easier to understand abundant life even for the little illustration I have made. But life itself, life itself, what is life? What is life? Jesus said, abundant life. Let's look at John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, to discuss a bit more on that life. I mean, even though I've already said what it is. So we're going to be discussing this and making a contribution as we kickstart this study. So John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, I will read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In him. Who is the him that Jesus Christ, the one who said, I have come to give you, to give me abundant life. So the scripture here says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and by the word, God made all things. So for you to understand life, then you have to go back to the beginning and look at how God made all things by the word. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Reading verse 2 now. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Verse 3. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Remember in John chapter 1, in verse 5, he said, and the light shines. Verse 4 says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. If you read verse 5 of 1 John, he says, that was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. That gives light to every man that comes into the world. Verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not, that darkness that was over the face of the earth, darkness did not, did you see that in the past tense, did not overcome it, did not comprehend it. Of course, darkness is the absence of light. So life brings light. This life of God brings the light. Glory be to God. And when this light shines, darkness disappears. If you're in a house that is dark and you switch on the bulb and the bulb comes on, instantly darkness disappears. That's how it is. So life, this life is the life of God. Is God in us, manifesting in all aspects, in all dimension. So if we read for that Genesis, then God said, I'm reading verse 3 again. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And you read for that. So God said, everything that God said came forth, came to being, came to existence. Abundant life. The life of God through Jesus Christ in all aspects and ramifications of life. 
Glory be to God. So before you come for the discussion, therefore, because I want to pause here for us to discuss, because we have set the context. It is all about Jesus. So I want them to give us the context of Matthew. Matthew. And as I've been told us, please get real studying um, materials. My Bible will give a context of every book and sometimes chapters. So the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew wrote the Gospel in order to show to the Jews and invariably the rest of us who have come to read the scripture that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That's the whole context of Matthew. So I'll read it the way it's written in my script Bible so you all get the context. Matthew is the gospel written by a Jew to the Jews about a Jew. Matthew is the writer. His countrymen are the readers and Jesus Christ is the subject. And Matthew's design is to present Jesus Christ or Jesus as the king of the Jews, the long-awaited Messiah. Through a carefully selected series of Old Testament quotations, so you now understand when you see those Old Testament quotations. Matthew documents Jesus Christ's claim to be the Messiah. Now you see why I told you, write down what Jesus said about himself. Who is he? And translate that to who you understand Jesus is to you. So this is what Matthew is all about. It's to show to the Jews and, and therefore all of us by whom Jesus has extended the Gentiles, the promise of God to who Jesus is. That Jesus is the promised long-awaited Messiah who has come. Praise the name of the Lord. So with that context, then let me summarize Matthew chapter 1. And then also use it to remind us of the scripture itself. Because you're now going to see lots of quotations being made in Matthew. And you'll be wondering, when I tell you and say, you see, the Levitical priesthood has passed. And therefore, the law that established the Levitical priesthood has also passed. So when you're reading the Bible, you must understand what Old Testament means. Old Testament as a covenant is different from the way the Bible has been split into two parts, Old Testament and New Testament. The Bible is actually one continuous record about Jesus Christ. And so Jesus said, search the scripture, for there you think you have eternal life. And it's there written about me. It's all about me. So the Old Testament is not Old Testament law. There is a very specific aspect called the Old Testament law that is about the Levitical priesthood that has passed. The law, when we talk about the law. But of course, there are principles there you will see. Now you have to open your understanding to know that the, the synoptic gospels were written and the time of Jesus was Jesus interacting with the Jews. So when you are reading the synoptic gospel, you must know what is the context for you today as a child of God. And let me help you. The context for you today as a child of God is the position of Jesus Christ. Hello, is the position of Jesus Christ. For example, many read the story of the woman, I think it's uh, Matthew chapter 13 or thereabout, who said to Jesus, ah, but the dogs do eat of the crumbs that falls on the uh, under the table. 
And Jesus said to the woman, great is your faith, and healed the daughter. Many will want to follow that woman. No, that's not your position. You are not a dog, except you are still outside Christ. If you're in Christ, you are a child. And Jesus there said that the children eat on the table with him. You see how to apply scripture. So many will always put themselves like the woman as a dog. If you're not in Christ, yes, you are a dog. If I'm not in Christ, yes, I am a dog. But thank God I am in Christ. I am no more a dog like that woman demonstrated. I am a child. Jesus said that it is not good to give the bread that is meant for the children to the dogs. So the children eat on the table with him. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 23, he prepares a table before me. Hallelujah. So we eat with him on the table. So you take the position, you are a son made in the image of Jesus Christ. In the worst case, you are a disciple. In the worst case, you are a disciple. In the context of the synoptic gospel, but know that Jesus has brought us to himself, to the place of sons and daughters of God. So as you study this, take note. Now, the book of Matthew chapter one, I believe many of us will read it and say, ah, what does this Bible, it's difficult. No, that is the foundation. Now that you understand the context of Matthew, that it is to show that Jesus is the Messiah the long-awaited Messiah, so that when you read the Old Testament, everything that was said about the Messiah, then you know is applicable to Jesus Christ. And therefore, your relationship with Jesus Christ determines what you receive of that full life, that abundant life that the Messiah has brought. Are you following? Glory be to God. So Matthew chapter one, therefore, Matthew was showing the genealogy of the Messiah according to the prophecy. So that's point one. Point two to make, to realize is that, it is again to emphasize the fact that Jesus is not according to the Levitical priesthood. It is according to the Melchizedek priesthood. Hallelujah. So the Levitical priesthood of Aaron has been abolished. And Matthew chapter 1 demonstrates that Moses does not play a role in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Moses does not play a role in Christ Jesus. Yes, we can learn of his examples. We can learn of him also as a prophet, as a chosen vessel of God, what he said about Jesus. But the law of Moses, Christ has fulfilled everything about it and has established the new covenant by his blood, which has brought us to God as sons and daughters to, of God. That's what Matthew chapter 1 is establishing. The last point to note, therefore, is so, the key point rather is, so there Matthew established that from Abraham, whom God gave the promise, to David, there are 14 generations. From Abraham to David, there are 14 generations. So you see that in verse 17. Let's look at it. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David until the captivity in Babylon are 14 generations. And from the captivity in Babylon until the Christ are 14 generations. This is cardinal. So in Abraham, God promised a seed. That's what the scripture is teaching that will be the savior of all humankind, that will be through whom all nations of the earth will be blessed. 
Genesis chapter 17, Genesis chapter 18, and then chapter 22. Then come David, whom God promised that through him, his kingdom will be established. Are you following now? And that's why Jesus is called the son of David. I want to pause here. If you then go to the carrying away, the captivity in Babylon, there you see Jeremiah, Isaiah, the prophecies that were given concerning the Messiah, Jesus. Cardinal points that points to Jesus, the Messiah. So that's the summary of Matthew chapter one. I want to stop here and hear your discussions and contributions uh, today. It is about the context that we have set. It is about abundant life. What does it mean? And we have shared a few points. And the context of Matthew showing who Jesus is as the Messiah. So everything Jesus does, as you will now see in Matthew, Matthew selected key. Jesus did much more than what is written in Matthew. It is what plays to that context of who Jesus is as the Messiah. Okay, now open the line, feel free, ask questions, share art, and we will continue on this journey. God bless you. We're not going to rush it. We're going to take it bit by bit. Please feel free. Open the line. Please go ahead. Ma. My learning for today is um, on this abundant life things that God has given us everything that we need. The life, both even the light for us to shine wherever we are. So the abundant life for us to live healthy, for us to have resources, to live the good life, and also the light for us to shine wherever we are. And it's not just something that happened uh, without being planned. Right from the time of Abraham, it was already planned that Jesus Christ is going to come. As he promised to Abraham, as he promised to, to, to David. And he also came to pass. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Excellent. I will ask uh, Sister Gloria. Oh, sorry, Dara, you opened the line. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Dara, please. Go ahead. Yes. As mine is a question. Good morning, sir. Mine is a question. So really, the Jesus, uh, from that, those two scriptures, God has given to us all of the things that pertain to uh, life and godliness. My question is, why? I know the direct answer will be that... Um, all of us who have received Christ, we should, you know, we should be all of what God has desired since he has given it to us. My question now is, why is it that there is a, there's so much struggle? There's a huge gap for most of us Christians. There's a huge, huge gap between who, where we are currently in comparison to what where God expects us to be because he has given everything to us. Why is there so much gap? Then number two, why is it so much of a struggle moving from where we are as we receive Jesus into the abundant life, the place, the space of everything pertaining to life, godliness, and living that fullness? Why is there so much of a struggle making that transition. Those are the two questions um, coming to my heart as you teach to talk about this. Good, excellent question. So we will note those questions because that's really why we're taking this study. And, and that's why we're exploring this. So uh, in, to, to high grade it some into headline, the gap between where we are individually and where we are supposed to be in the fullness of God. Um, in terms of his provisions, God, uh, uh, or his provisions, as he has state, stated, all things pertaining to life and godliness. And number two, the journey and the struggle 
thereof, the journey and the struggle thereof. So we know those and we will talk about those because that's why, that's what the study is about. Uh, we are at different levels at different points. Uh, the only thing to just say is that uh, um, part of what I captured at the beginning was that it is the knowledge of God and of Christ, you know, that makes the difference. Remember, haven't been given. So you can apply it to anything, physical example that we know. They teach the people the same subject in class, and some make A's, and some make B's, and some fail. Why? That's at the uh, other way to look at your question. And that's really where we are, what we are here to discuss, to explore. Thank you for the question. Um, we'll take it into the context. OK. Um, does anybody else want to voluntarily? I had called my um, wife, Gloria, to say something. I think, uh, Ma, I just still, still have the opportunity to say something. But before you, anybody who wants to volunteer, anybody who has something you still want to say, either you want to add to what you have heard, yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Good afternoon. I think. Yeah. I yes, think, please go ahead. Yeah, I think go ahead. Taken from today and um, from the scriptures is just to continue to study the scriptures in order to gain more knowledge of the character of Jesus, like you said. Um, and I think in doing that, that would help us develop our relationship with him. And we will therefore be able to walk in the fullness of the abundant life that has been made available to us as Christians. So that's what I took away. And also just to encourage everyone else to um, take the scriptures seriously with the intention of gaining knowledge about the character of Jesus. Thank you. Excellent. 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 Yes, uh, Sister Comfort, go ahead, please. Thank you so much, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity. And yo, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for taking it step by step. <laughs> for where will we go if we do not know who Jesus Christ is? I, when I started reading Matthew, like you have said, I told you, I, I, I saw Jesus real and that's, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, you came to earth to die for me. You gave your life to set me free. You give your life to deliver me. I saw Christ and I felt it. And you have said it. Christ is the key. If we do not know him, if we do not understand him, then the gap will be so wide and we will be so far from God. And I also thank you for understanding of that woman. And me, I was always, appreciating the perseverance of the woman in responding, going back to Jesus. But today you have helped me to see more than we are not more dogs and uh, strangers that we have taken that position of the children that Christ said the bread is for. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So Great. that is, uh, what I, 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 another point that I will now be looking at. So mm -hmm. Jesus has accepted me mm -hmm. as one of his, not okay. even disciple, sisters. And we are all his sisters and brothers. If we build faith in him. So I thank you so much for that. And in my 16th uh, chapter of the Matthew, 
My focus was on the Peter's conversion of Jesus as Christ, because I have seen your teaching is, we have to know clearly who is Jesus Christ so that we will have abundant life, so that we will know how we can get what we uh, deserve from our heavenly father. Christ said he came to lead us to the father. He is the only way. So Peter said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, except my father, the Holy Spirit. So I think the, the, I, um, I, I, I pray that we will get to this gap that uh, um, my brother Dara is talking about. I have also been asking this question. Each time I have the glimpse of where we are, or where we should be, each time I have that glimpse, but I know if Peter, after seeing Christ and was eager to follow, the, the, the wind still disturbed him. And my prayer is God, please, whatever is the wind, whatever is the storm, be it me, be it anybody around me, please help me to remain focused. Focus on this Christ so that I can have this abundance life. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate that. So to Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18, I want you to read from verse one to four as we start this journey. Matthew chapter 18. So Jesus said, except you be converted and be like a little child. I just read Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who then is greater in the kingdom of heaven? They're going to start addressing the questions that are rising. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, as surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This is where I, had, I plan to close with this child, to uh, reinvent the child in you because there lies the kingdom of God in you. Reinvent the child in you. So many of us have given up that childlike faith, that childlike aspiration, love, joy, freedom, peace, boldness, everything. So when we're talking about this abundant life, remember what Jesus said here in Matthew chapter 18. So for every one of us, it's going to be a different journey talking about that God. Reinvent. This is my child to you. Reinvent the child in you. Take your mind back. Recapture that yourself as a child. I had looked for a video of a rebobbling child. So we will play. Please, any one of you can put that together for us. We want to play it because this is what I was praying. God, how do I illustrate this? Difficult subject of abundant life. Life, this life, this life. In this world, just like my brothers asked and my sisters further corroborated, what is abundant life? And I was given the image of, and this word of a child. The innocence of this child just bubbling. A child, no matter how poor the father is, a little child still believes the father has everything that he or she needs. However difficult that their circumstance, you see a child is still playing. In fact, if you want to test, check refugee camps. You will see children playing football, enjoying themselves. 
So this is the word I was given that I should remind us, reinvent the child in you. That's what this journey is. God Almighty bless us all. Uh, Sister Gloria, I've taken all your time. So thank you for giving up your space. But if you still want to speak, please take 30 seconds. If you don't want to speak, we want to pray. Um, praise the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You. Go ahead, please. Okay, just very quickly, in addition to all that has been said, the context in Matthew chapter 1 that you talked about is very important. Because I, for one, have been like wondering, why did we have four Gospels, four books in the Bible, to talk about, you know, they looked like they were telling the same story. But setting this context, I believe we you shared something with me some other time that helped me to understand it better. And I believe as we go on this journey at the end, we will be able to fully understand it by the grace of God and be able to apply it better. And our lives will be transformed for the better in Jesus. God bless you. Thank you. And bless you too. Amen. So uh, this is where we want to close. Let us just pray. Remember, it is the hearers and doers of the word, not those who hear but don't do the word, that are blessed. So you must do the word. And what are we going to do? We will all continue to study Matthew chapter 16 to 22 today. And we will pay attention to those three key things we mentioned what Jesus says about himself, according to the synoptic gospel, Matthew, and then translate that to yourself and say, who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus? And then number two, pay attention to what Jesus says we should do, because this is where the gap lies, okay? Now that I've been, uh, you have brought it out, I think that helps me to explain it back to every one of us. This is where the gap lies. I always challenge us. I say we are where we are because of what we do and don't do. Yeah? Even in the faith, what we have been given. Okay. Uh, because of time, I'll move on. So what Jesus says, we should do. Pay attention to that. And then number three is now you putting your own action plan of that transformation journey. How do I personally get to the fullness of Christ? What are this? The, 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 how do I reinvent myself to become like a child? How do I reinvent the child in me while still being adult? and maintaining the maturity. Jesus said, reinvent that child in you, yet you have to be mature. <laughs> Amen. You look at this balance. Think about that. And the Holy Spirit help every one of us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for teaching us your word. And we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will continue to teach us and help us. Heavenly Father, we are seeking the fullness of the life you have already given to us through Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you have given us abundant life. You have given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. We pray and ask that you will cause that fullness of your life to flow in us, manifest in us. Let us shine your light. Let us make great impacts in our lives, in our family, in the world at large, and bring you much glory. So, Father, we return glory to you for what you have done today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will continue to be with us, to lead us, and guide us. Holy Spirit of God, please, this word you have given to us, reinvent the child in you while still being adult and mature in Christ. Please help us. Teach us. The key word of humility was used there, but you meant much more than just humility, the way people talk about it. You meant for us to be humble enough to be free like a child, because the child is humble, and therefore the child doesn't mind doing anything that 
The child is, the understands, sees as necessary. The child doesn't hold any grudge. The child doesn't hold any offense. The child forgives easily. All dimensions and ramifications of humility. Lord, we pray that by your spirit, you will teach us to be able to reinvent the child in us and be blessed as you have promised. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. God bless you, the Almighty God, pour his spirit upon you and strengthen you that you will do great exploit in all aspects of your life this week. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bye-bye.